Here's our level C doffing and decon procedure as of November 3rd of 2014. When we talk about decon, there's emergency decon, which we expect to not need very often. And that would be where there's an obvious contamination with a likely exposure um, that's imminent unless we immediately do some washing off of the substance with pretty high volume of uh, water in this case. What we'll use is tank water off of an engine. If engine's not there, we'll pull a quick line off the grass rig. There's no need to worry about runoff in this particular situation. Again, it's emergency decon, standard emergency decon that's used in a hazmat world, but this is how it might apply to an EMS call with hazmat implications. Then there's also gross decon. Gross decon is when there's obvious visible body substance contamination, and we want to remove that uh, in an effort to um, limit the opportunity for exposure. And typically that's done while standing in a large bag, trash bag, biohazard bag, with absorbent pads. We're going to use wipes, um, disinfectant wipes, bleach wipes that are hospital grade to remove this gross contaminant um, over any place we can see it. Put those wipes, just drop those in the bag. And then we're going to very conservatively spray some bleach solution. And spray is a, is a bit too much of, too strong of a word. So we're going to use spritz. Spritz meaning to spray very little, very sparingly. Uh, apply this bleach solution over the contaminated area. And the bleach solution that we're using has a one minute kill time. So we'll need to wipe and then spritz, let it sit, and then wipe a second time. Wipe, spritz, wipe. Most of what we're going to do with these EMS calls that have hazmat implications and have hazmat PPE involved, so we're going to use technical decon. And so any entrant into the hot zone and any decon staff, whether they're dirty or clean, um, will get the appropriate technical decon. Now, the exact PPE that's worn by the decon person depends on what we've encountered in terms of gross contaminants. If there are gross contaminants on the people that we're deconning, then we'll need to be in a PPE that allows us to protect from spray, which probably conservatively would mean um, the level C suits for the decon folks also. If we don't have any gross contaminant and we're simply going to be wiping, then level D is just fine. So goggles and mask. It's a multi-step process. It's not something we're going to do fast. It's slow. It's deliberate. And we're going to use a checklist. The safety person will be the trained observer. And we're going to use a checklist and go by this checklist. And checklists have been determined to be very helpful in many areas of medicine um, and we have really tended to not do so much of that in emergency services but a checklist can be very very valuable. So here's what it looks like. Um, we're going to double bag with the large red biohazard bags. Now the picture of course is showing trash bags um, but we want to use the red biohazard bag. Double bagging makes sense. Not absolutely necessary but just a good prudent practice. We're going to have the entrant, the person who was in the suit that came out, step into that bag. And in the bottom of that bag are some absorbent pads that are going to soak up what little fluid we're going to use if there's any spritzing that goes on. All wipes and the suit will end up in this bag. Now there's a second bag that we're going to use. That's the save stuff. Items that can be disinfected and, and reused. Items with some value. The Scott face piece, the adapter for the face piece, our fire boots if we end up happening to use them, portable radio, etc. These items are placed in a separate red biohazard bag, and this one doesn't need to have an absorbent pad. There's not going to be any spritzing of that stuff. Next, the entrant's going to wash his gloves. Alcohol-based hand rinse, bleach wipes, wash the gloves. And then any visible gross contaminants are going to be removed with the bleach wipes, followed by spritz, and then a second wipe, and Dirty is going to handle that. One of the two decon people named Dirty will be handling that. These bleach wipes are hospital gray. they got a one-minute kill time for Ebola, different kill times for different uh, substances. We're using them to remove gross contaminants. We're using them for cleaning, and then a repeat application does the disinfectant. We wipe in a circular motion, we work head to toe, we drop the wipes into the bag, and really the clean person, the other of the two decon team members, the clean person, should control and distribute those wipes so that they're not cross-contaminated. So clean is going to be the wipe distributor. 
Dirty here is taking um, some wipes and cleaning the face piece and then down the seam, down the velcro closure over the zipper. And then we're going to do some tape removal and you're going to work from top down. Remember this tape was applied just like roofing shingles and so we're going to work from the top down um, carefully removing, no splattering and uh, the tape gets tossed into the into the bag at the entrance feet. Next there's a, some teamwork here between dirty and clean. To this point clean has really been standing there holding wipes but now clean's going to get involved. Dirty will open the velcro around the zipper and clean will unzip that and they must work closely and here's some pictures showing that. So dirty on the left is opening the velcro that covers the zipper and now clean's going to reach in here and unzip carefully and deliberately. We're in no hurry here. We're going to unzip pretty much all the way down because we're going to need it all the way down in order to to get the suit off their shoulders. The next thing is dirty pulls up on the hood. Now this takes up more space on the checklist than any other item. This is a, a part where we worked with this several different times trying to get the very best practice. Dirty needs to pull up on the top of the hood and using the, the tab, the duct tape tab, about a one inch tab that's sticking out at the forehead in the center line. He's going to pull up on that tab if possible. If that's not going to work then he must reach up and, and kind of gather up the, the hood and raise it and fold it back, fold it inside out so that the clean person can, uh, can make access there and roll it down. Here's some pictures. Here we did not have a tab and so he's just gathering that suit up and he's going to kind of invert it and here where we had a tab. Now again obviously this the dirty person would be in PPE, inappropriate PPE um, but we were uh, we have this photo from uh, some of the trials that we did and so here again he's pulled up on the tab and he's uh, with his right hand and he's using his left hand to invert the suit so you can see the inner line of the suit in that area would be, would be okay for clean to grab and roll down. So dirty's got to stay on the outside, clean's got to stay on the inside. With these particular suits there's brown on the outside and white on the inside and that uh, is a nice visual indicator. We're not promising that all suits will always be that way. So it's important to identify a clean and dirty surface if you don't have uh, colors to help you out. Clean and dirty work together, communicate move roll that suit down off of both shoulders work one shoulder at a time again that zipper has got to be all the way down and you'll never get this off his shoulders and again clean is touching white touching the inside the clean surface so the clean person is on the left in this picture dirty is on the right he has his hands uh, inverted palms up and he's working that suit down and they keep doing this they're communicating between the two of them there shouldn't be a lot of chatter otherwise and it's important that they talk to each other as they're working the suit down and, and off of those off the shoulders and, and getting the arms freed up. Again, we continue to work down more of that. And now the gloves, the hands are getting ready to come through. And uh, this is where things can go one of a couple of ways. There's not exactly uh, a perfect outcome every time here. But these outer gloves um, need to come off first and then we're going to need to to work in and, and work on getting the sleeves um, spread from the inside. A clean person is going to reach in and touch the inside sleeve of that suit not the outside. And Again we we kind of uh, are showing this here with bare hands being the clean person and uh, blue gloved hands being the dirty person. And We have a little short video clip here and again this just came from us trying to work out practice and get some best practices. It's not the cleanest thing ever, but here goes. I pinched it and then rolled my fingers back underneath it to try to get it. Now what we know is that end is relatively clean there. And you just hold it right there. Because you've got the elastic spread. Oh, you steep level a little bit, I can see it. Yeah, it's, 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 it's okay. It's, 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 pulling, it's pulling down here. It's not pulling okay. back here. Right. So that was the key as issue. As long as I've got that. Right. As long as you've got that, you just here. invert that thing around. And it's just a just a quick pinch. Kind of like we were doing initially on that hood, where we are just trying to get it right at the face seal and move back. It's all back here. You never touch his gloves. Right. You just right the back and pull it. And see, I've got white showing to him the whole way around. Cool. 
So now that we are um, continuing to work down here, again, clean would be on the right in this picture, dirty on the left, and once you've touched inside that, that clean suit, it's now dirty, but it's all going in the bag anyway. We're just going to try to get the suit down below his knees, and then we're going to have uh, arms come out when arms need to come out. In this case, the outer glove uh, remained on. We'd prefer to, to have already had that off if possible. And then, um, same sort of thing, we're rolling down so that we can safely um, get the entrant to be able to sit down um, on a bucket or a chair. We like a bucket. The orange bucket that the uh, suits came in has worked pretty well. Um, clean and dirty, continue to lower that suit until it's at knee level or below. The entrant sits on a bucket or a chair. We're getting boots off and into the bag. Uh, depending on what kind of boots we're working with, um, initially we had talked about using fire boots. We found those were pretty tight fit on a lot of people, so now some uh, inexpensive uh, disposable boots may be involved. But whatever's going on here, just put it all in that bag, and then we can sort uh, from the trash bag into the save bag and, and uh, reclaim those fire boots if needed. If they're not the fire boots, we're just going to go ahead and put them all um, in the trash bag. Uh, the clean person's going to assist on the inside, um, and if the entrance feet do come out, we want to make sure that he keeps them up and, and off the ground, and we get those feet bagged in a in a fresh, clean bag. Now this. It's where the inner gloves come off, and there's a hand wash, and then new gloves are applied. The entrant's going to want to take off his own face piece. And so that means the inner glove needs to come off, and then hand washing, and then fresh, clean gloves be applied. And um, this can be done from the clean side. So, um, But we're, we're doing it right here from the dirty side, and that's probably uh, probably the better, better option is that the gloves come off uh, before we spin the entrant around on the bag. Now the rest of the suit uh, can be moved into the bag and then we're going to spin the entrant around about 180 degrees um, so that he's on a clean side now. Put a clean bag over his feet and then we're going to let him take off his own face piece and, and Dirty, as you can see, is reaching in there with his right hand just kind of steadying that, that bulky respirator um, cartridge piece of the face piece, keeping it off of um, the entrance um, relatively clean shirt, certainly not contaminated shirt. Um, and then we will get the cartridges off, they go in the trash, and uh, we'll keep the uh, adapter and keep the face piece and believe that we'll be able to uh, to get those cleaned and disinfected. So here's pretty much what it looks like uh, toward the end. And the finish up is the last pair of gloves that the entrant had on that were only used to touch his face piece. Those come off, another hand wash, he stands up and, and moves either in a bag or walks along some trash bags we've laid out as a pathway, a pathway to the clean area. And the theory we're kind of working with here is that red bags are where we're putting equipment and um, shouldn't be stepping in there more or less and then um, with bare feet. And then the trash bags, the black trash bags are the pathway to clean. A final inspection, see if there was any contamination that was missed by chance, kind of assess the potential for exposure, and then most of the entrants are going to want to shower and get some fresh clothes pretty soon. Uh, according to the CDC, that can happen at the end of shift, so it's not emergent that that happens right now. So a fairly detailed look at the doffing and decon process um, as we see it as of now.